Welcome to learning to engineer. In the previous video, we saw the different challenges faced while measuring high resistance. Now, let's see how to overcome those challenges and then measure high resistance. We are going to discuss three methods of measurement. One is the direct reflection methods, then the loss of charge method, and then the mega ohm bridge method. Let's get started. We have seen that there will be current losses when measuring high resistance. When you are trying to measure high resistance, you will be passing a test current through it and this cur test current will be leaking through the insulation of that material. So there will be current losses. In direct reflection method, we are going to introduce a guard terminal in order to minimize this current loss. The purpose of the guard terminal is to ensure that both the resistance as well as the insulation is under the same potential. When this same potential between two nodes, it means that both of them are in parallel and hence when you are measuring the voltage across this combination, it will be same as the voltage across the resistor and this voltage will be same voltage across that insulator as well. So, we are going to introduce a guard terminal and then uh, measure the voltage across this setup. This is your metallic sheet and this is the insulation of the conductor and this one is your conductor. The ammeter will be in series th uh, through the conductor under measurement and you will be connecting an additional wire through these terminals such that uh, the resistance as well as the insulation is in parallel. This is called as the guard wire and this voltmeter will be connected across this combination. So now you have the value of the voltage that is across this resistor as well as the current that is passing through this resistor. So according to Ohm's law, you can find out the value of resistance as R is equal to voltage divided by current. So now you have found out the value of this resistance when you have a very high insulating material which is almost same as this, the uh, resistance of measurement. Usually a uh, very high resistances means resistance of the order of uh, uh, 1 mega ohm or even greater than that which is nearly same as the resistance of the insulation. So in that case two parallel resistors with nearly same resistances will be connected in parallel and you will be considering that current that is passing through this conductor alone and you will be considering the voltage across this pair okay this is direct deflection method this terminal will also be connected to this metallic sheath uh, to get a return path once you get a return path the current path will be uh, parallel to both the conductor to the metallic sheet as well as this guard wire. So the voltage that is here will be the effective voltage of all these two resistances. So you will have a more accurate reading of voltage without any current losses. The next method is the loss of charge method. When we apply a test voltage through 1000 ohm resistor, what happens? the test voltage will be passing through the resistor and the moment the leads are connected to that resistor the voltage will be maximum and the moment you take it off this voltage will go to zero quickly but when you have a high resistance in this case the voltage will not go to zero the moment you take the lead resistances if you connect a test voltage through a thousand ohm resistor the voltage will be maximum the, as long as uh, your uh, leads are through that resistance and the moment you disconnect those leads what will happen the voltage will quickly go to zero but it is not the case for high resistances when you connect uh, the leads across the high resistance the voltage will be maximum yes but the moment you take it off the voltage will not quickly go to zero due to the capacitance effects of the high resistance in loss of charge method, we are going to kind of amplify those capacitance effects by connecting a capacitor in uh, parallel with that resistance and after connecting this uh, capacitor in parallel, we will be measuring the voltage across this combination by this voltmeter. We will measure the test voltage and then we will also measure the voltage that is across this combination after the switch is thrown off. So the instantaneous voltage of a capacitor which is V of T is equal to V0 into E to the power minus T divided by tau where tau is the time constant. Time constant is equal to 
resistance of the circuit multiplied by the capacitor. We do not know the value of this resistance, but we do know the value of this capacitance because we are only connecting this capacitance. And one important point to note is this capacitance should have a leakage resistance which is similar to that of the resistance under measurement. Only then we will be getting accurate results. Okay, so before that let us see how we are going to find out the value of resistance by this loss of charge method. So we have to isolate the term tau in order to find out the resistance. So to do that we can take the V0 term to the other side. So this will be V of t divided by V0 is equal to e to the power minus t divided by tau. To take this tau alone, we have to take natural log on both sides so that this e power term vanishes. So a natural log of V of t divided by V0 will be minus t divided by tau and the value of tau will be minus t divided by the natural log of V of t by V0. So this tau is equal to Rc, correct? So this implies the value of the resistance will be minus t divided by the capacitance into the logarithm of v of t by v0. So now we have found out uh, the value of the resistance. So if to, in order to find out that we have to experimentally determine these values. We have to note down the time at which this happens. Let's say at time 5 seconds you have a voltage of 2 volt. So this information you need and you need to know the initial voltage of that capacitor which is V0 and obviously you need to know the value of this capacitance. By using all these data you can find out the value of the unknown resistance. This is loss of charge method. Mostly you will be using this method in order to find out high resistances. Okay, let's see the next method which is mega ohm bridge method. If you want to do this procedure for different values of resistances, you have to have a different form of circuit because you can't use the same circuit for measuring 1000 ohm to measure uh, the 1000 mega ohm. You can't use the same circuit to measure mo more than 1000 mega ohm and so on. So basically you want a setup such that if you plug in the unknown resistance into that lead, you should get the resistance immediately. Such a procedure is mega ohm bridge method. Consider that this is the high resistance that you are going to measure and the terminals A and B are the end terminals of this high resistance. So the resistance RAB is the resistance in the measurement which is connected in the R arm of the Wheatstone's bridge. The resistance RAG is equal to the insulation resistance which is mentioned as Ri and the resistance between RGB is equal to the guard resistance or the resistance between the guard terminal and the end terminal of this resistance. When you have a setup like this, you will invariably reduce the value of the uh, resistance R. This is just a modified form of Wheatstone's bridge. If you just plug in this high resistance into the R terminal, you will be facing errors because of the insulation resistance and the resistance between the guard terminal and this resistance. So what can you do to overcome this? If the circuit should be slightly modified like this, the circuit should be slightly modified like this such that the galvanometer is connected in between these two terminals and then you have this guard terminal connected in parallel with this galvanometer terminals. When you connect this RG between these two points, it means that the resistance RG is in parallel with this galvanometer or it is in parallel with these two terminals, these two points. You should ensure that RLI is in parallel with P and then the resistance Rg is in parallel with the galvanometer. Only then you will be getting a considerable amount of accuracy in this method. Another thing to note in this method is the resistances Q as well as S have logarithmic increase of dials. The Q has different dials which is calibrated in logarithmic terms. The first arm will be 1 ohm, next will be 10 next is 100, next is 1000 and so on. So this will be in log to the base 10 terms. 
and also the S terminal contains the standard resistors which act as multiplying resistors. If you want to measure 10 ohm mega ohm, you should be connecting the lowest possible resistor in S1. And if you want to measure 100 and 1000 mega ohm by this process, you have to connect the different uh, levels of S2 based on the resistor that you are planning to connect. Okay, you won't know the value of the resistance, but you might approximately know this resistance should be something in the order of uh, 10 power 10 or this resistance should be something in the order of 10 power 12. You should have at least that minimum uh, amount of information about this resistance. Only then you, you can choose the value of the correct multiplying resistance. Okay, so S will also be increasing logarithmically. Uh, it will be 10 into 10 to the power 6, which is 10 mega ohm. The next multiplier will be 100 mega ohm and the next one will be 1000 mega ohm and so on. So both of them will be logarithmically increasing. Both the dials of S as well as Q is logarithmically disc, uh, increasing. Why are we doing that? This is just a modified form of Wheatstone's bridge, right? In Wheatstone's bridge, you can measure very low resistances only. But if you want to measure high resistance, you have to put this bridge to balance, which means this equation, uh, which is P divided by R is equal to Q divided by S should be satisfied. So in that case, Q and S should be comparable to this unknown resistance R. If unknown resistance R is super high and you are connecting 1 ohm and 2 ohm across it, the uh, bridge will never be balanced. In order to balance this, you should balance this ratio and you should be maintained comparable to this. So P will be always less than uh, R. Let us say P is uh, 10 ohm and let us say uh, the R is of X mega ohm. Okay. Uh, you do not know the value of x, which is why you want to measure this bridge balance. So, uh, 10 by uh, something in mega ohm, this ratio will be 10 divided by x mega ohm, which will be something around micros. Okay. So, if you take this ratio, it will be around micros. So, similarly, the value of q should also be something like if q is 1, then S will be probably, uh, let us say, 10 mega ohm. So this ratio will also be in micros. Thereby, you can achieve this bridge balance condition because of it. Okay. So that is why you have the ratios S1, S2, S3 in logarithmic multiplications, which is of very high resistance. And you have the value of Q adjustable in order to get the value of the resistance accurately. Okay, so now in this video, we have seen three methods of resistance measurement. One is the direct reflection method. Next one is the loss of charge method. And then you have also seen the mega ohm bridge method. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and do give a thumbs up if you like this video. If you want any particular topic to be featured in this channel, you can also let me know in the comment section or you can just mail to learning to engineer gmail.com. In the next video, I am going to be teaching about the measurement of earth resistance. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also ring the notification bell so that you will be notified when I am going to publish this video.